Ladies and gentlemen, let's for gaming to the com video. We're going to be exploring the differences between the R9 Fury versus the Fury X because some leak specifications have popped up which hint that there is a discrepancy between the two cards, but it's not it's not huge. So we all know what the Fury X has. It has of course high bandwidth memory which puts out about 512 gigabytes per second. That's 4 gigabytes of HBM1 on a 4096-bit bus with a memory clock of 500 megahertz. Now, that bandwidth is a, is accompanied with 4096 stream cores, 256 TMUs and 64 ROPs, and that puts out about 8.6 TFLOPs of performance if you then associate that core clock of 1050 megahertz. So what the hell differences are there between that and the Fiji Pro, because remember the Fury X utilizes the uh, the Fiji XT, whereas Fury, which is once again the slightly cut down version, uses the Fury Pro. Well, as it turns out, it lowers the number of compute units. It's got 3,584 stream cores or shaders or ALUs or whatever you wish to call them, which means there are only 56 compute units. Um, but the big deal, um, Actually, is the core clock has also been slightly reduced to 1,000 megahertz. Naturally, this does mean the TMUs are also slightly reduced. You're getting 224 versus 256, but it's not it's not a massive big deal to be totally honest. The compute performance does go to about 7.2 TFLOPs. I say about because. Obviously, some manufacturers might slightly increase the core clocks or what have you, so there is a little bit of wiggle room there, so you might get some cards that are technically 7.3 or something along those lines. Is it bad? I mean, well, what about the price range? Now, admittedly, this is really early, but supposedly there's going to be about 100 US dollars between them. So currently, the Fury X is retailing at 650 Obviously, it does depend on manufacturer where you're buying it from, the luck of the gods. Whereas this card is going to be at 550 So it kind of depends, like, how much you actually really will miss that roughly 1.4 TFLOPs of computing performance. I have a feeling that the, the, the Fiji Pro is probably... Especially if it overclocks well. Obviously, it's still really early days on overclocking with the uh, with the Furies. But assuming some manufacturers, because supposedly AMD are going to allow their board, board partners to be a lot more aggressive with the cooling setups and a little bit more wiggle room. So possibly we're going to see some with actually higher core clocks anyway, just right out the get-go. So maybe this will be a pretty good purchase. Now... If you recall with the R9 290X, or even the 390 versus 390X, there's a very good argument, to be honest, that for most gamers, the 390X is, or the 290X are probably not such a good purchase as the 290. This is particularly true back in the day when cooling was a problem for the, two, for the 200 series. But even from a price slash performance point of view, there's not a huge difference. Obviously, we will have to wait until we get actual benchmarks, but my gut feeling is for most consumers, $100 save might well be worth it, but it's there is quite a lot of performance difference. I mean, it's not like it's, you know, 500 G flops or something small and insignificant. It's about one point around 1.4 so to put that into perspective it's basically like saying well this is the xbox one's gpu because that is actually the xbox one's gpu is actually slightly less than that it's about 1.3 slightly more about 1.32 to be exact so technically speaking you're missing that amount of performance from the um and we're of course talking about raw compute performance uh between the Fiji XT and the Fiji Pro. Now, there is, of course, also the Fiji Nano, but there's a lot more mystery surrounding that. Um, and, of course, in autumn, there's also going to be the Fiji X, 
Fiji 2, um, which is a Fiji X2, which is going to feature two Fiji XT cores, at least that's what the rumours are at the moment. So that's going to put out around 17 teflops of compute performance. Some people are saying around 18. On the other hand, it might be more around 17. This will depend, of course, on what the final core clocks are. They might slightly be lower, simply because of TDP reasons. On the other hand, maybe AMD can squeeze them up a little bit. So it will depend on quite a few variables. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.